Chris Dawson, guilty. The teacher of Teacher's Pet podcast fame is behind bars and will probably stay there for a very long time. Four decades after his wife Lynn disappeared, nobody ever found, Dawson has been convicted of her murder. A judge has just said what everyone has thought, that the rugby league player and teacher killed his wife to be with his teenage lover. She was a schoolgirl from Coma High in Sydney's Northern Beaches, where Dawson taught. Despite two coronial inquests, both concluding that Lynn Dawson was dead and her husband Chris likely killed her, charges were never laid. Justice has been a long time coming for the family. It wasn't until journalist Hedley Thomas launched his podcast series in 2018 that things started moving. The heat was on the cops and that year police went digging for evidence at Dawson's former home. In December, detectives arrested the now 74-year-old man. The podcast was a global hit. 30 million people listened. Hard to find a jury when 30 million people think the case is already solved. Judge alone trial, the verdict by Justice Ian Harrison SC, will give hope to many families here in WA. Well, there are many families here who've also been waiting for decades for answers. Like Shirley Finn's family? The Perth brothel madam murdered in an execution-style killing back in 1978 and there are many more unsolved murders and disappearances over the following decades. There's always been the theory that the people responsible for these murders are in jail for other crimes. The cops are toying with giving out cold case playing cards to prisoners to jog a few memories while they're playing Texas Hold'em. Yeah, that sounds like a long shot. Well... They pay the best when they come off. Andrew Forrest built his entire fortune on that philosophy. Australia's second richest person has used the release of FMG's annual results to make the audacious claim that if the green energy arm of the business was floated on the stock exchange, it could be worth $29 billion. That's the value Forrest says some financiers have put on Fortescue Future Industries. Have you been drinking? $29 billion for a company that has not only never sold anything, it hasn't even invented the thing it's yet to sell. I'll learn. If it does list, its ASX code shouldn't be FFI, it should be MBI, as in Magic Beans Industries. You've been saying this about green hydrogen for months. Don't take my word for it, take Andrew Forrest's. This is what he was reported as telling this year's Sydney Energy Forum. It is impossible right now to finance a green hydrogen project. We don't know what it is. We haven't produced a bucket full of it yet. That's what he said last month. So how do we reconcile that comment with FFI boss Mark Hutchinson saying this week that the company could start generating revenue in three years? But Hutchinson and Forrest do know how to make it. Scientists worked out a way to use electricity to split the hydrogen from the oxygen in water. We've been doing that for a very long time. And we've worked out how to use solar panels and wind farms to create that electricity again been doing that for ages. But we have never done it all at the same time at a big enough scale to fill one of these. And we certainly haven't worked out how to do it at a price that makes green hydrogen competitive with LNG. Dreaming. Also haven't worked out how to transport it because the last time hydrogen was popular was when the Hindenburg was flying and we all know how that ended. All the humanity and all the Forrest openly acknowledges the transport risks but he's downplaying it a bit when he says it's tricky. Doing a hard flip or a backside tail slide on a skateboard is tricky. Transporting something that's 20 times more explosive than petrol is dangerous. Skadoosh. Forrest says he likes being on the road less travelled. There's a reason nobody's on it, mate. He has signed a lot of agreements. Uh, he's a lot of talk of agreements and partnerships and memorandums of understanding. Two words missing in all that so far. Binding contract. There are a lot of hurdles to clear before anyone makes a buck out of this stuff and even more before a company doing that might be worth $29 billion. Yeah, but he's done it before. Fortescue Metals Group is worth, what, $60 yeah, billion? At least, yeah. And everyone thought he was nuts for trying to compete with BHP and Rio at the time. He went from a rough business plan to delivering 180,000 tonnes of iron ore to China inside five years. That's one of the greatest ever achievements in Australian business. Well, business, really. I said you're about to say a but. But <laughs> the difference back then was iron ore actually existed. <laughs> Anyone thinking about buying shares in FMG because they like what they're hearing about green hydrogen needs to remember that. Having said all that, if he does do it, he won't just be the richest man in Australia, he'll be the richest person in the world. 
Forrest reckons the global green energy trade could be worth more than 17 trillion Australian dollars. Wow. Maybe he could use some of that money to buy mouthguards for teachers. We all thought teachers were quitting because of scenes like this. <laughs> Apparently the kids are nothing compared with their parents. This is filth. I'm fed up with all this reading. The WA Primary Principals Association says inappropriate parent behaviour is one of the key reasons chalkies are leaving the workforce. Principals are able to issue prohibition orders to stop disruptive people entering school grounds, but that doesn't stop them taking to social media to continue to blame teachers for the shortcomings of their children. Well, teacher is named Krabappel. I've been calling her Crandall. Even though it's blindingly obvious that if you're the type of parent who abuses a teacher, then you should look closer to home for the reason your 10-year-old still can't spell their own name. I'm learning. It's enough to make any kid want to vape in class. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.